And I'm just so passionate about boxing because I think it's the greatest sport mm. in the world. I mean, it's bizarre, but it is just such a pure, brutal sport. It is, but there's so, there's so much artistry to it as well, and so much, and it's far more tactical than people give it credit for. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's not just two lumps. I mean, sometimes it is, but yeah. for the most part, well, in my experience, it's not too. I, that's why I've never been a big mixed martial arts fan. Not that it's it's not an incredible sport, but it's something about when they go on the floor and start hitting each other I in know. the head. I'm but you've not been around it, then. You know, you know that fighters are incredible characters, right? The storylines are amazing. Yeah. These aren't just normal people from a normal background. If you fight for a living, you know, you, you've got to put it into perspective. You're going out in a stadium in front of, could be 90,000, mm -hmm. could be 20,000 at the O2. Basically, people who have, who have had a few beers, right? And you are fighting another man in a ring, right? In front of all these people that are there for a good time and have it. That is not normal. Yeah. Right. But the stories behind how they got there and what they go through, not just in their early life, but in training, yeah. you know, the psychology of sitting in the changing rooms and what you're about to do. You come out, there's nothing like being backstage, you know, oh, and, I bet. And, and just before a fighter opens the ropes and sees everything with his gloves on and goes, this is it. I'm about to have a fight. That's something that, you know, uh, I mean, I would imagine being a, a musician or even mm -hmm. you know, what you do on a massive show when you walk out. Mm -hmm. and that, Oh, there's that, no feeling but, like it. No, but imagine having to fight. Yeah. You know, actually going there with another man who's trying to knock you out. You know, you're fighting for your life. You're fighting for your health. You're fighting for your family. You're fighting for your legacy. It, it's just the narrative. And that's what gets lost a little bit sometimes. It's sort of almost a quirk of fate you got into boxing. Because your dad bought the Romford Snooker Hall almost as a kind of a... Um, a real estate deal, right? Mm. He just wanted to, and then then he fell in love with Snook. Well, I think he always loved Snook, but then he, then then he got in match for him. And then was he into boxing before you brought boxing back? Yeah, for sure. I mean, he, my dad was a chartered accountant. Yeah. He was one of the youngest ever qualified chartered accountants in the country. And then he started working for this uh, big fashion company. And the directors there said, "Look, we want to look at our investment portfolio, and we'd like you to run it." Or so he sort of said, okay. So they got involved in some property. It didn't go so well. And then my dad said to them, I think snooker's got big potential. I think we should go out and we should buy snooker halls. So they went out, they did that, and they bought Romford Snooker Club. Yeah. But whilst he was there in the snooker hall, he got a phone call from upstairs. And, and someone said to him, look, you've got to come upstairs, Barry. It's unbelievable. There's his kid playing snooker. You know, Steve Davis, obviously, he was from Plumstead. He used to get the bus from Plumstead to Romford every day. You know, like that ginger fuzzy hair and my dad went up there and just watched him play and he just sort of next thing he sort of brought him down to the office to to sign him up yeah and then they as, a, as his manager yeah without any knowledge i mean knowledge of snooker but not the the, the circuit or, or the commercial <laughs> world of sport and then they went all over the country just basically hustling you know so they'd turn up at all these clubs and they'd say look I've got this kid here who wants to play him you know there's 500 quid a turn or whatever it is yeah. and a corner and they'd beat everybody and then they'd drive home and they'd do it all over the country and then obviously started entering tournaments and snooker at the time, good timing. Everything's about timing mm. as well. Timing, luck and ability. For him, it was, I want our team to win everything, yeah, yeah. not I want to control the sport. Do you remember much we of just, that? Yeah, because I would get picked up like, you know, we back then don't we had... A white limousine, right? This is before you'd, you'd go on a stag do in a limousine. They just didn't really exist. You knew they were in America. So he had a, a white limousine and a black limousine. And when I look back at snooker gods, I think, I said to him the other day, I said, you were so arrogant, right? He was going, we win. That's all we do. Match room, win. I said, I look humble in comparison to you. You know what I mean? And he's like driving, he's got a driver and he's around in the limo and all the players are getting in in their waistcoats. But that was match room. You know, yeah. And that's what people bought into yeah. at the time, especially the players. So... Yeah, you know, Steve Davis is my godfather, and I've known him obviously since I was born. And I used to be around his house all the time, and you know Tony Mio, Jimmy White, and all these guys. Yeah, and that was you know in my young young days of you know being three, four, five. And then after a while in snooker, he sort of believed that he could do the same in any sport, uh -huh. and he had an idea to do Frank Bruno against Joe Bugner, right at White Hart Lane. It's his that, first yeah. ever show. So this is his first yeah, ever box. Yeah, he just turned around and he went, oh, do you know what I want to do? I want to do Frank Bruno against Joe Bugner at Spurs. He didn't have Frank Bruno. He didn't have Joe Bugner. You know, he just approached Frank Bruno and then you've got like Mickey Duff and like this old school cartel sort of saying to him, mate, what are you, you know, he's with me. <laughs> he ends up doing the deal between the two of them, putting it on ITV and like he's away. It was probably the worst thing that happened to him in boxing because he thought, oh, this is easy. Yeah.